So I wanted to talk about analog versus digital in terms of production of artwork because as somebody generally interested in a lot of different things like photography, music recording, video, and these sorts of things, I find it interesting that there are these sort of analog purists, I guess, I guess I'll call them, or the cult of analog, because I remember I had a video called The Cult of Mac, so maybe I'll call them The Cult of Analog, which they sort of have this, this mythological belief about the inherent superiority of um, any sort of analog medium. For one, for me personally, because I sort of jumped into digital and that was what I was first exposed to with music recording, photography, for the most part, I mean, I've worked with 35 millimeter before digital cameras were readily available, but not to the same degree as I've worked with digital, uh, digital photography. And um, I don't think I've ever really done all that much or maybe even any analog recording other than just things in a tape recorder uh, that weren't really dedicated music recordings. I never, never like shot on actual film. I, I do own as a novelty an 8mm uh, camera, movie camera, but I, I, it's, it's the sort of film that they don't even make anymore and it would just be impossible to get the film and develop it. So, and they do make Super 8mm, but I wouldn't really bother because it's just so, it would be so costly for such little benefit. It would be just a sort of luxury novelty item and that is what a lot of analog is becoming, is a sort of luxury and a novelty. But I'm not totally against analog. I think that there are some, there are certain things that you can do with analog that just cannot be faked digitally. Digitally, digital has its weaknesses. You know, you have uh, like aliasing in uh, digital recording, and just the 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 tonal quality of it overall is different from analog. But I'm the sort of person who I realize the differences and the strengths of one and the and, and the strengths of the other and their and their weaknesses of one and the other and I'm, I'm sort of like okay let's get down to brass tacks and just look at the facts this can do this this can do this this can do this we have a task that we need to complete uh, maybe this aspect of it would be better for analog even though it might take a little more effort it will add something this aspect would be just a hell of a lot faster and easier to do in digital and I'm not too concerned with uh, the the sort of being a purist about it. Oh, we have to have we have to have uh, it has to be recorded in digital. We have to cut this to vinyl and all these other sorts of things. Um, for example, when I've done music recording, the, the sort of things that I've recorded, it's all been in digital. But I, I think not. It's not just a matter of that. That's what I have to record with. I think that it works well in digital. The sense of space and separation and just. Uh, how easily things can be manipulated, given that I have no actual instrument playing ability, the ability to, to, to manipulate sound um, on, on many different levels on the computer just sort of aids uh, in, in creative production to come up with something sort of strange without, um, with, without having to really uh, try as hard as you would in analog. Now some people would say, you see, that's the problem. It has now become sort of, not idiot proof, but somebody who has no musical ability can make something that's um, arguably semi-musical. But I don't, I don't see that as a problem in the sense that now that you have digital photography and, and Photoshop, digital recording, Pro Tools, all these other sorts of things, the, it sort of lowered the, the the previous high bar in terms of quality is has been lowered to achievable to a lot more people and now there's a new high bar and it's arguably vastly higher than it ever was with analog recording the layer the sure it may have taken somebody for example with photography a great deal of time to learn how to um, manipulate a print in, in the developing process or with um, you know the just putting filters on the on the the printmaker and and making all these distorted things and now you can do it in two seconds in Photoshop and and, and most things that you could do with a photograph in a dark room take 
the, the, you, they have been made idiot-proof by Photoshop, and some people would see that as some sort of photographic calamity. But once you get into it and you see the layer of depth that you can get out of out of it with Photoshop, there there's layer upon layer upon layer and combining things in ways that you wouldn't that unless you ha have a mastery, and I mean a mastery of the program, you might not even ever think that this was possible um, once you really get into really advanced Photoshop techniques. So there's a whole new high bar in terms of the, the, the technicality of the art, and I don't see that as a loss. I see that as a tremendous gain, because there's this whole new range of potential that's available to artists. And yes, they do have to um, step outside of their comfort zone and learn something new. And so I sort of wonder if this is somewhat motivating, this, this clutching on to analog is the pure form of the art, because they might be slightly off-put and maybe a little like frightened of jumping into these new um, and vast mediums. Uh, and it always comes back to the question of what is art. I still want to do another video response about modern art because I think I was sort of misunderstood in the rhetorical nature of my question about why does this belong in a museum because people answered me literally. But when you have the modern art movement, you have essentially people challenging the boundaries of what is art. And sometimes I feel that when people uh, they, who have this attitude that's sort of skeptical or shunning of digital, they're like, well, that's not real art because it doesn't take as much effort. Um, certain things don't take as much effort, but how much you can do with it, I mean, you can add <laughs> as much, you could add vastly more nuance than you ever really could with analog in digital. And you, you can even combine mediums. Um, recently, I've been exploring around with the new uh, mixer brush, uh, testing out like Photoshop CS5 has this new mixing brush thing. And I've been able to do digital paintings and create texture in a way that never would have been possible with, or not never would have been possible, which have been much more difficult in previous versions. Uh, my previous attempts at painting, um, like painting over a digital photograph, have been abysmal in in uh, previous versions of Photoshop, just because you you just have to manipulate the tools in in all these um, really complicated <laughs> and like layered way. And now it's been it's been sort of simplified, and they have a new brush that responds the way that say wet paint would, and you can set it in all these different ways. And of course, I have a a tablet, and my tablet's just a cheap one, but they also have ones that that can register like tilt and rotation and um, uh, direction of motion and all these other things uh, that mine can't because mine only cost 50 or $60 and I got it for my birthday. And you know, they're the ones that are several hundred dollars. They have all these, you know, more layers of pressure sensitivity and uh, all these, you know, specialized pens for, for the thing. And so I don't think that, that painting as a, um, as a physical medium is as quite in danger as, say, photography is. Photography has reached the point where um, I've gone into Walmart and they've stopped stocking Kodak film. They still have like Kodak disposable cameras, but in terms of just individual canisters of 35 millimeter film, a lot of Walmarts just don't even seem to stock them anymore. They have like Fuji and um, it just seems like it's it's slowly fading away and what is surviving out of it is certain um, kitschy niche things that produce something which cannot be easily replicated like uh, Lo Lomo, Holga, uh, Polaroid. Lomo is an example where it was it came about when uh, 35 millimeter photography was still readily available, like, you know, 35 millimeter film was still readily available, but the fact that these, these cameras coming out of the Soviet Union just were def essentially defective in a way that made the pictures interesting, there, there became a whole sort of, um, photographic cult built around these cameras and the, the just the the unusual results that they produce. Uh, Holga is another example of that. I actually have a Holga. Um, and Polaroid. Polaroid is a more, at first was a, a victim of the digital in that it was going away. 
and it got to the point where they stopped making most sorts of Polaroid film. But because of its unique characteristics, uh, a, a group of people literally bought the plant that, that with the, the last plant that was closing down that made the Polaroid film in the Netherlands and had a whole you know, team of people trying to reconstruct the chemistry to, to figure out how to make the Polaroid film again and then they started selling it and it was successful enough to the point where Polaroid stepped back in and decided to partner with them in order to uh, start re-releasing these films because they realized that just Polaroid photography has something to offer which digital doesn't and so um, it, it's still sort of a niche market nonetheless but that seems to be what what um, uh, you know, just analog mediums of photography have been relegated to, and I don't think that that painting and drawing and these sorts of things have quite reached that point yet. But uh, maybe as more as more tools uh, uh, in ways like tablets and new tools in the programs um, it become available to it and, and and more intuitive to use, how much longer will it be before the majority of things are drawn di digitally, essentially, and that, that painting is just, uh, painting on a canvas is just this sort of novelty. And maybe I'm wrong, I mean, I, I can think of ways in which this might already be largely true that, uh, you know, people are just using Illustrator, um, but that's more for graphics, but I'm talking about like painting, painting. Um, it's it, it sort of how, how much longer what, what's the, what's the shelf life on some of these analog mediums before they're they're just sort of relegated they settle down into this niche sort of thing and what does that mean for art when you have these tools available to the average person and the, that uh, the the old you know